the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Are you really hearing the spirit or are you just hearing words? Right. I'm going to bring it back up. Let's have a look at verse number eight of, of Mark chapter four. All right. One second. Let's see if we can nail down some concrete uh, realities that are in the text itself. So, so let me just ask you a question about verse eight. I need to look at verse eight. Well, let me ask you this question. You said Mark 4, 8. Mark 4, 8. It's not showing. Is it showing? It is now. Now, from verse 8, it should become clear to all of us that the whole intent of the sowing is to bring forth a harvest. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, all these other grounds brought forth no fruit. Unfruitful, right. Yeah. There is no fruit until you get to good ground. To good ground. Right. Yeah. Can, can we all agree on that? Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. But except for the wayside in the stony ground and the thorny ground, the seed was sown, conception happened, something sprang up, but it never achieved the goal. Right. Yeah. You couldn't endure the environment. Now, now, you need to understand that when it comes down to the kingdom of God now, verse 8 is absolutely critical. That you understand that what God is after in sowing is 30, 60, or 100 fold. Mm -hmm. He ain't after anything else. Yeah, right. He ain't after green leaves. Beautiful deep roots, <laughs> beautiful foliage, head after that. All of that is necessary, but if it stopped there, then the purpose for Jesus coming into the world has not been realized. Right. Can we all agree on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, so now, how do you, how do you capture this, this, this single element? How do you capture that? In your CIT. Well, well, here's mine again. I just throw my, <laughs> I just throw my eyes up there. The, I thought I kept, you said, I said, I, I, I was trying to capture most of the critical pieces in there. I said, first of all, you need that spiritual ears to hear or, or heard him because you want past tense. And then I had, I felt as a critical piece in there about the enemy comes in to steal. Then I put in there, but you, and that, that that's talk because he's talking to the crowd, right? He's talking about the people, but not everybody in that crowd were good ground. We all can agree with that. But I was saying is whoever were good ground he said, but you were good ground and produced good fruit. Well, but you see, now now we need to go a little bit further, a bit further and understand what exactly is this fruit in this context. In this context, it says. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Now, what is he talking about? Word. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. What, what did you say, Addison? Go ahead. <laughs> they brought forth the fruit which yield seed, which is yeah, the word. But he mm -hmm. said, what, 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 is that? what is that fruit that was produced? See. That's exactly Word. You said seed no. before. What? So no. Now you you had gave that answer before, and I can give you what you said before. 
I, I think Jimmy said it one time before. Was was for souls? To you, you do earth. understand. You do understand that this parable is really about the preaching of the gospel and yeah. men receiving the gospel in their heart and becoming a disciple. So that these men, listen, so that the men that become disciples, they go on and they become witnesses and share the gospel. Other men hear them and they get Join they me. become a part of the kingdom. So that's this the, is truth. the proof that he's talking about. He's so talking about disciples that can make disciples. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and, and, and hey back and Bishop throw my by that shadow we were talking about was replenishing the earth. Is that similar? Is that a shadow of what this is about to? Because he said replenish the earth. Are we that's our task to replenish? So, you know. Born well, again disciples. Well, in it's, it's our task to submit ourselves to the only one that can make a disciple. Okay. You see, the disciple maker is Jesus. Okay. And once you have Jesus in you, you become an instrument for Jesus to continue his ministry of making disciples. Yeah. <clears throat> but he is the only one uh -huh. that can that can convert a sinner into a saint amen he will do that through the instrument instrumentality of our submission and our person him working in us and through us he does that work mm. but ain't nothing we can do to get somebody born again amen amen we one man plants one man water but god gives the increase amen okay so, then uh okay then uh uh, uh, uh bishop I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here thinking that, okay, now when a person gets saved, they don't come out being a junior Jesus right off the bat and start trying to <laughs> disciple people. But they, when they get, when a person gets saved, you're going to fall down, you're going to get up, you're going to run through them storms, the words going to land on you, they're going to bounce off you sometime. You have to really get your heart prepared to hear the word of God. If we can't hear the word of God by using our mindset with our cognitive thinking, we have to use the word of God by our by our spirit, by our soul, by our heart. That it, that it gets sown into our heart. So, uh, so I'm sitting you need, here. You so need a shepherd. Me, pardon me. You need a shepherd. You need somebody who can disciple you. Right. You. I, the I'm first thing you need, the first I'm thing saying you need, need it. I'm say, saying. You need somebody who is genuinely, authentically saved themselves. Yeah, but see, sometimes most people in churches don't give you that type of person, and you don't have that type of person in your life. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, listen, I feel you. I've been there myself, <laughs> but I'm saying when this thing jumped off, those 12 men were discipled by Jesus himself. It was so important that, Jesus, that God came down here and did it himself. He couldn't trust that into some other man's hand. Exactly. No one else could comprehend the depth of what it means to be a a, a new creature except God himself. Yeah. And so Jesus became flesh, dwell among us, call those 12 men and said, let me show you now what you really were created to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Watch me. Yeah. I do want to I do want to uh, clarify what you said, Bishop, about the difference between the two atoms too. That was uh you you put it in that verse here, uh the first bat let me say it right here, verse 45. Yes. So it was written, the first man Adam was a was made a living soul. Yes, sir. But the Adam we're talking about, the last Adam, was and made a quickening. A, yes, sir. That's the difference. So it, whatever dominion was given, it was still not a it was not a living, eternal kingdom now what adam was, could give you what adam could give you was a fallen corrupt life yeah <laughs> natural, a natural fallen corrupt life right right and, listen in john chapter 10 jesus jesus puts all that in front of you by saying i am come yeah and you might have life you might have life yeah and the, the question you ought to be asking is if, well, if you come to I might have life, what is it that I have right now? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I got something right now 
But apparently Jesus is saying, I didn't come for you to have what you already got. Right. I came for you to have something that is from above. Yes, sir. What you got right now is from beneath. Woo. You got death. And, and so he told him, he told him in John chapter 8, he told the thousand Pharisees, he said, look, I am from above. You are, yeah. You, <laughs> you are not from above. You are from beneath. Right. <laughs> also, that distinction, you can't comprehend what I'm talking about because I'm talking about above this thing. All you know is beneath this thing. Mm -hmm. And the only way for a beneath this, beneath creature to be able to comprehend above this thing is to be born again or to become a new creature in Christ. Amen. If you, say, you must be born again. That's what he's talking about here in chapter in verse 8. Uh -huh. He's talking about men that God can use now to bring other men into the kingdom of God. My point. But my point is, conception of the word of God happened in the hearts of the men in the good soil. Conception happened in the thorny ground. Conception happened in the, in the stony ground. The same conception. The same they heard and received the same word, but they but they were of different qualities. And now you got to somebody captured that in your CRT. And, but 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 you don't have to you don't have to state it verbatim. Uh, I've got it stated in such a way that when you hear it, you automatically know that it encompasses conception. Joe Harper is saying that you've got to hear the voice of Jesus and, and put your faith in that in order for conception to happen. You, what, what, wow. When you hear his voice, now, now I'm gonna say something else that's going most of you probably ain't gonna agree with, but it's okay. I don't believe that faith, I believe that faith is God wrong. God, I didn't hear you. Faith is something that God works in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's not something you do. Hmm. That's yeah, it's, it's the fruit of the spirit. I know that. Well, he's okay, talking about that. I guess it's okay. Okay, okay, okay Elder, you need to back that up now. Yeah. Let me help you out. <laughs> Let me help you out. Turn it, turn it, turn to Romans chapter 10. This this verse y'all don't preach though. Well, in Romans chapter ten, verse number. In the context, I'll I'll. Uh, Romans chapter ten, verse number nine. Okay. Ten nine. Okay. It's on the screen too. I don't want to, but I don't want to mess it up. Can I start at verse number eight? That, that that's the easiest place to start without really messing up the text. Verse eight said, "But what say it this? He's talking about what is written. The word is ninety. This is what Moses testified to the children of Israel. This whole chapter is talking about what Moses did and what Moses said and how Moses ministered to the children of Israel in the Old Testament." Mm -hmm. So for the sake of time, since we since the Bible said they started breath one. Romans 10 breath one. <laughs> Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now that tells me right there that there was no kingdom. <laughs> because they because Paul is saying, even at the point where Paul wrote this letter, Paul said, Israel ain't part of the kingdom. <laughs> They're not saying right. He said, "For I bear their record. I, I, I can testify myself. I bear the record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Mm. They doing some stuff. They killing sheep, slinging blood, making offering." They doing all everything that was written according to the old covenant, but they ain't got no clue who God is. Mm. 
They say it's not according to knowledge. Yeah, knowledge. That's what well, they be yeah. ignorant. Ignorant, not knowing. Good Lord. Of God's righteousness. They know man's righteousness. And going about to establish their own, I call it self righteousness. Self righteousness. Yeah. A cardinal righteousness. Yeah. So now, see, see, when it comes down to righteousness, see, you can be deceived. You can be righteous in your own eyes and condemned in the eyes of God. Soulless righteousness. But what we're after, we're not after self-righteousness. We're after righteousness in the sight of God. Amen. And Amen. you're going to find out the only way to get that righteousness is through faith in the one that God sent into the world that you might have life. 